Good morning and welcome to Bates Nursery Botanical Boot Camp. My name is Melissa McKay. I am the Sorry about that. <laughs> I am the annuals greenhouse manager here at Bates Nursery. Today's topic is creating beautiful fall containers. I love container gardening. Um, it's accessible to everyone, whether you own your space or you're renting. Uh, even if you have the space and ability to plant a garden in your landscape, containers are a fun way to, uh, fun and economical way to experiment with new to you plants and plant combinations. If you spend a lot of time on Pinterest or uh, in gardening magazines, the idea of recreating the gorgeous containers you see may be a little bit intimidating, but fear not, I am here to walk you through the process. First, let's talk about your container. Uh, it's essential that you have a container with a drainage hole in the bottom. Here in Middle Tennessee, we tend to get lots of rain in the winter. Uh, you don't want your plants to rot from too much moisture. And you also don't want excess water to freeze and crack your pots. Uh, if you have a large drainage hole, the way to keep soil from draining out of that is to put a coffee filter in the bottom of your pot. It'll still drain, and that way you're keeping it a little more neat. <clears throat> if you want to experiment with something that doesn't have drainage, like say a metal bucket or something, you can line that with a plastic pot that does have drainage. That way you, you can just lift that liner out when we get too much rain and you can dump out any of the excess water that's collected in the bottom of your container. <clears throat> I mentioned earlier that ponding water in pots could freeze and crack your pots. Even if you have good drainage, not all pots are... Um, can endure the freezing temps. You want to look for a label that says frost proof. Here at Bates Nursery, all of our frost proof containers are outside, and then all of our pots on the indoors are for the indoor plants, and they are not frost hardy, frost proof. <clears throat> if you have chosen a big planter, say around 15 gallons or so, um, you're going to spend a lot of money on soil trying to fill that up, but there are ways to get around it. Your plants are not going to grow a whole lot during the fall and the winter, so they don't need a whole lot of room for their roots. I'd say maybe a depth of about 10 to 12 inches of soil is sufficient for your fall containers. So what you can do to fill up the rest of that space is take things like empty bottles, some styrofoam blocks, drop these in the bottom of your container. This will take up some space and then that way you're not having to pay so much to, to fill it up with soil. Uh, sometimes I like to put a layer of landscape fabric over my fillers, but that's optional. You could do either way. Speaking of soil, oh I didn't bring it with me. Ha! <laughs> We use here uh, at Bates Earth Mix products. It's a product that we mix here on site. Um, specifically for outdoor containers, we have a product called Proganix O. And uh, that has got some topsoil in there. It's also got some, you're going to want a, a soil that has good drainage. So this has uh, your vermiculite and your perlite in there that's going to make the soil a little fluffier and drain better. Uh, also has some nutrients in there like pine fines, mushroom compost, earthworm castings. Uh, there's some granular clay product in there that breaks up the soil. Really good stuff for your pots. Fall is a short season, so while you're thinking of your design for your pots, you should be adding plants that will add some winter interest. Cabbage and kale and pansies in fall colors, they're really gorgeous, but your pansies are going to last all the way up until spring, so you might want to consider colors that will work for multiple seasons. 
Uh, you can also add some evergreen plants that will give you something to look at while your other plants have gone dormant for winter. And I'll show you some examples of that in just a moment. Spring bulbs. You can even think all the way into spring by adding some bulbs to your planters as you're planting your, your flowers. Um, yellow and purple pansies are great for fall and for winter. And so you can add tulips to your pots. And let me just show you real quick how to do that. You want your, well, thank you. So you want your soil level to be about six inches from the top. You take your bulb, pointy side up, and you just kind of push it in the soil, kind of squish it down in there just a little bit, and you can fill that with bulbs. And then you just put your pansies on top and fill in with a little more dirt. And then in March or April, surprise, you have extra flowers in your planter. And the time to, to get these flowers, daffodils and tulips, a lot of people think you can come out and get them in the spring. The best way to get those is to plant the bulbs in the fall. So Bates Nursery has a lot of those, uh, lots of places around town have bulbs that are readily available. So, thriller, filler, spiller. I'm sure a lot of you have heard this phrase before, but there may be people out there that don't have a clue what this means. Thriller, filler, spiller is an easy formula to follow that will give your pots interest. A pot full of nothing but pansies is gorgeous, but it doesn't really make you do a double take. If you want to create drama in your containers, you should plant in levels. Your thriller is going to be something tall and ornamental, say a grass. And then your filler is usually going to be your pansies and violas. You can also use cabbages and Swiss chard for your fillers. And then your spiller is going to be some sort of like an ivy or even the Angelina sedum will stay evergreen. Anything that's going to trail over the edge of your pot is considered a spiller. You can do, if you have a pot that's at least this big, you can do that entire combo in one pot. You could have your thriller, your fillers, and a couple of spillers. You can also create this by groupings of pots. So you have a pot collection that's varying sizes and heights. With that tallest pot, you could put something big like a, a tall grass or a shrub. The pot that's kind of medium level, you can fill that with pansies and cabbages. And then maybe your shortest pot, add in some, some spillers. Um. <clears throat> So let's talk a little bit about fall annuals and what your choices are. Most popular fall annual is going to be, or annuals are going to be your pansies and your violas. And I have a lot of of customers ask me, which are better, the pansies or the violas? And why is it that my pansies don't bloom all the way through the winter? Well, Violas definitely are going to perform better than the pansies. They can be completely frozen, and then once the temperature starts to rise, they just pop right back up and start blooming again and don't skip a beat. The pansies, on the other hand, they get a little cranky if they're too frosty. And two, they need a lot of light to bloom. And as you know, here in Middle Tennessee, we tend to have some pretty gloomy, wet winters, so sometimes it's not enough daylight for your pansies to bloom well. Uh, One way to get them to bloom a little more consistently through the winter is to make sure that you're getting them planted early. That gives them a longer time to get their roots established, and that will help them sustain their bloom through the winter months. We also have chrysanthemums. This is another hugely popular 
fall annual. Um, these are going to bloom for probably about three or four weeks. The best way to buy these is kind of like you see it right now. They're all, they're just starting to open, but there's a lot of buds on here. So then you've got like a, a week or so of this kind of color, and then it's going to open completely up and you'll have some time of bloom there. If you buy them when they're fully open, all the blooms are open, you probably only have maybe a couple of weeks or so of really good bloom before they kind of start to fade. And I have questions too from customers of like, how do I get my chrysanthemums to bloom longer? You just can't. They're kind of a flash in the pan, and but they're gorgeous for, for a short period of time and we just enjoy them for that time and then they're kind of done doing what they're going to do. Are they perennial? <coughs> Yes, no. Technically, you might get them to come back, but if you want them to be this gorgeous, rounded, full of blossom plant, that takes a lot of work. It's pinching back in certain times of the of the spring and summer, and then you stop, and then it's it's, it's a whole thing. You don't want to do it. So <laughs> it's best to buy. We sell them here as annuals, and that's really the best way to purchase them. Next, we have cabbage, kale, and Swiss chard. This is an example of an ornamental kale. Where are my cabbages? Here would be a cabbage. <clears throat> These are great for fall containers. They're going to take up a good bit of space. And uh, if you get them planted early enough, and our winter isn't like, crazy crazy cold for like three or four days in a row these should make it all the way through the winter now people ask if if i know if they're going to make it through really it all depends on the weather i can't predict what our weather is going to do but with our an average winter here in nashville tennessee these should make it through the winter and into spring also want to talk about evergreen plants for your containers. Okay, so like I said, pot full of pansies. It's beautiful. It's not really stunning. So you're going to want to add some things that are going to be, have some winter interest and something to look at through the winter months when most everything else in your yard has gone dormant and is kind of brown and not much to look at. So um, one of my favorite perennials to use for fall containers is the autumn fern. This is one of about three or three species of ferns that will keep their leaves all through the winter and keep this color. Uh, it's called autumn fern because the new growth that comes out is kind of this orangey coppery color and then it starts to turn more green as the frond is on there longer. Now, and you may be thinking, well, my pot is in the full sun and isn't, aren't ferns shade plants? Well, yes, they are shade plants, but the winter sun is completely different from the summer sun. So we get to bend the rules on plants for our containers during the winter. So fine during the winter. Now, when it gets to spring, summer, you're going to want to transplant this guy somewhere where it's going to get a good amount of shade. And conifers, oh, heuchera, sorry. <clears throat> heuchera is another perennial that will keep its leaves all through the winter. They will start to look a little beat up towards, you know, end of February or so when, before they start pushing out new growth. And then once the new growth comes in, that's when you cut the the old leaves off. But it will keep some of its color through the winter. So it's a nice addition to, to your planting. Uh, there's many conifers that you could use, and uh, Bates sells several of these in one-gallon pots, so that makes it easy to add them in to a container. You can use shrubs that have a beautiful fall color, like Nandina, Lakothwe, um, Abelia, and... You know, boxwoods, 
don't have beautiful fall color, but they'll stay evergreen all through the winter. If you want to know if a plant in your pot is going to survive the winter for uh, perennials and shrubs, you want to look at the zone hardiness. Uh, say a plant is hardy to zone from zones four to eight. That lowest number is what you need to know. If it's hardy down to zone five and lower, you're okay. It's going to make it through the, the winter just fine. You also want to consider this if you have problems with deer. Deer are going to eat your pansies and violas. There's not much you can do about that. You can try to, to spray, but that you have to do that on a regular basis. Uh, pan, uh, cabbages and kales, they tend to eat those too. But conifers, they will leave alone. They don't mess with ferns. And heuchera, most of the time, is, is deer resistant. So these are good options if deer is a nuisance where you live. So planting in your container. It's essential that you, if you're looking at cabbages and kale, that you buy them big. We don't really have the advantage that we do in the spring of a long growing time. You can be economical and buy the small little plant plugs and they'll have plenty of time to fill your pot and look gorgeous. Fall and winter, not a whole lot of growing going on during those months. So if you want your container to look full, you should buy bigger sized plants. So like your cabbages and kales, you could buy them in a small size, but it's really, really best if you go ahead and get the bigger size. It makes more impact. And like I said, little plugs are okay for the spring. In the fall, you're going to want to fill that pot up. Um, as a coworker of mine says, you don't want to see any brown in that pot when you're done. For the fall, if you look at the spacing requirements on pansies, I think it says to plant like six to eight inches apart for a container. Don't worry about it. Cram them in as tight as you want. You want that pot to look as full and lush the day you plant it because that's, that's what it's going to look like all through the winter. Not much growth going on there. Uh, care. Often am asked how often pots need to be watered during the winter. We tend to get adequate rainfall here, so uh, watering is not usually an issue. Uh, however, October is typically a drier month, so you just want to check your pots. Also, um, your pots are not drying out as quickly as they do in the summer because they're just not, it's not hot baking sun. So just check the soil. If it feels moist to you, then you're probably fine. I would say if you've got about five to seven days without water, you might want to, to give your pot some additional water. Fertilizing. I'm a pretty lazy gardener, so I don't fertilize for the most part. Uh, the soil that I use has all those good amendments in there, and so my plants seem pretty happy with that. But you can fertilize if you want uh, more blooms, more consistent blooms with your violas and pansies. You can use fertilizer every two to three weeks or so. Uh, Flower Tone is a good granular and organic product. We sell that here. Uh, you just scratch it into the soil around the base of your plants. Liquid fertilizers work too. You can use a slow-release fertilizer like Osmocoat. Also, just scratch that in when you plant, and that should be feeding your plants all through the winter. <clears throat> okay, so let's plant a pot. So, I have got a pot here. I have filled it to maybe about eight inches from the top. So, it's good to go ahead and fill, fill it partially up. Make sure you're kind of patting it down. Get it pretty packed so there's no air bubbles in there. I'm going to start with a boxwood. Let's see. Hopefully, I don't totally block myself. <laughs> Also going to add a heuchera. 
and I'm cramming it in real close to this block uh, boxwood here. Also going to add in a grass. This is a chorus and this will stay evergreen through the winter. Uh, this is one of a few different grasses you can use that will stay evergreen. All the grasses in the Carex family, those will stay evergreen as well. Again, packing that in really tight there. Then I'm going to add a little bit more color with some pansies here. So that would be more of our, our filler here. Our thrillers are the boxwood and the grass. Filler is the heuchera and the pansies. And then we have our spillers here. This is vinca vine. And as long as we don't have an Arctic winter, they should be evergreen all through the winter. All right. So there we have our finished pot. Whoops, throwing pots. Uh, we have the boxwood, carex, heuchera, pansies, and they're all packed in there nice and tight. Once you get everything in there, you take a little soil, fill in all your little crevices here. So I won't do the, the whole way around, but you get the idea. So that is basically planting. Um, I do have a few different examples that I can show of some plants that I've put together. First formula oops, is a super easy one. It's formal. It's classic. We've got a spiral juniper here, and then I've just surrounded it with white pansies and a couple of Algerian ivy. So that's simple. It takes just a few minutes to just throw all that together, and it looks gorgeous. Um, what was the variety of grass that you used? That was a chorus. Sorry, did I say carex? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. A chorus, yes. Sweet flag, a chorus, yes. And so that is one combo. If we want to open it up to questions, I can, like, sure, we, we stage a, some other someone's things. Someone's asking what size pot that was. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I didn't measure that, so yeah. uh, say I'd say 14, maybe, 14 inch, yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay, so another example. Where's my friend, the autumn fern? My favorite. Okay. Um, we do have someone asking, what about rosemary as an upright or spiller? Hmm. Um, here's what I have to say about rosemary. It needs really well-drained soil. The biggest reason that rosemary and lavender don't make it through the winter here is because we have lots of rain. And they tend to, they don't like sitting in wet soil. So as long as you have a really well-drained soil, it might be okay. I would worry about it doesn't need as much water as the other plants that you would be putting in there. So I, it could work. It wouldn't be my preference to use that as a thriller. One thing I love to use for color is something with a colorful bark. This is coral bark maple. Uh, a lot of people use the red twig dogwood as well. So for this arrangement, stick him in here beside my autumn fern. And then I've got my heuchera. And we're going to add this grass. This is going to be our spiller here. And you can see this also, you get the gorgeous fall color and the leaves of the Japanese maple before it loses all its leaves. So, and you can add, I mean, this is a pretty good spiller. You could add a couple of ivy in with that if you feel like you need more spillage. <laughs> um, what was that spiller grass that you just used? That was called Everillo Carex. C-A-R-E-X. Not carrots. 
And that is an evergreen grass, and it's gorgeous. It's very popular here at the nursery. We can barely keep it in stock. And this is just coral bark maple. Uh, the heuchera that I used is called Amber Lady. It's a kind of a newer variety, and that one might come home with me. Are you ready for some questions? Sure. All right, we have someone asking, is ivy frost-friendly? Ivy is evergreen. Yeah, um, I've used the Algerian ivy quite a lot, and it makes it all the way through the winter. English ivy is also evergreen through the winter. Um, and then we have someone asking, um, they just want a little more information about putting bulbs at the bottom of the pot and color on top. Okay. Um, well. Like what, what sort of bulbs can you put down there, I guess, and, and how, how does that work, I guess? Okay. Um, I have used tulips. Uh, you can also use daffodils. Hyacinth is another really pretty one to use. And I would say kind of figure out your color scheme for the things that are going to be visible through the winter and then you pick your color of tulip bulbs or daffodils that will blend well with your color palette. And like I said, get your pot full to maybe six to eight inches from the top of the pot. You'll put your, your bulb in there and just kind of squish it down a little bit. And then fill in with a little bit of dirt and then you can set your plants on top might not come popping up as well through like a conifer or something but if you've got lots of pansies and maybe a heuchera off to the side or whatever if you've put those in the center they should be able to just pop right on up out of whatever you have planted on top let's see here's a way to use a conifer in your pot got the barberry here this is the orange rocket barberry so this could be our Thriller, this is a golden mop, uh, camocypris. So that could be used as your spiller. Both of this is going to keep its color. This guy's going to lose its leaves, but at least you have the the twigs in there that kind of. I mean, some people buy twigs and stick them in their pots. So this is going to be another thriller here. Red rooster curix. I love this grass. It's very. It just says fall to me, and it is going to keep this kind of orangey-brown color to it. So stick that in to the side there, and then we've got pansies. So that's, that's one option there. Um, here's something that a lot of people wouldn't consider for a spiller. This is thyme. And this is going to stay evergreen. And you get the added benefit of the, the scent. If you've got these by your front door, you, you have this scent every time you go in and out of the house. I have used this before as a spiller, and I love it. You've also got this really fun guy. This is the Cherry Berries Wintergreen. So, it could be a filler it could also be a little bit of a spiller it is gonna kind of grow out this is another great spiller this is angelina sedum sedums tend to keep their color through the winter so this is a really great option that chartreuse color i really love it is this is going to stay evergreen look at that red pretty red color that in with our autumn fern. You can use a heuchera. This is, oh, it's lost its tag. I believe this one is amethyst mist heuchera. Winter green that I just showed you. Weird. A spiller. Also add, if you want just a little bit of color in there, a rudbeckia. Now this isn't going to make it all the way through the winter. It's going to last through the fall, and then it's going to be kind of done. So you can put it in there, and then maybe after it's faded, you could replace it with maybe some yellow pansies or something. That's going to get you the rest of the way through the winter. <clears throat> um, 
we have another question coming in. When okay. spring comes around, do you leave uh, do you leave them in a pot or do you transplant them into the ground? The perennials or the pansies? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe evergreens. Evergreens, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, you could do either. Uh, I mean, most of these evergreens are going to be pretty slow growing. So I have had one in a pot that I've just kind of rearranged my spring and my summer plants around that for a couple of years, and then I'm kind of tired of them, so I'll take them and transplant them into the ground. But yeah, that's that's very easy to do once you get to spring, just transplant your evergreens and perennials that are in your pot if you don't want to continue to use those for your spring and your summer pots. This is fun. This is a Nandina, but this is called Flirt. So it's a little more of a weeping habit. It's going to keep that red color, and you can let it trail over the edge. And we can put our caramel cupra in there with that. And our ivy. But you could put another ivy over on this side to make it a little more balanced. So next week, there are two webinars. It's going to be fun. Uh, The first one is going to be October 22nd on a Tuesday. That is with Adam Chapman. It's called Keep Deer Out of Your Garden, uh, Planting Deer-Resistant Plants and Using Deer Repellent Methods. And then on the 23rd, uh, Wednesday, we've got Bates Little Shop of Horrors, and that's going to be spooky plants, uh, golf-themed. and Not sure yet who's, who's hosting that That'll be Ben and Caroline and Vanessa. Okay. So tag teaming it. Ben, (laughs) Caroline, and Vanessa. So that's going to be a fun one. So I thank you for watching, and thank you for your questions. This has been fun. Hopefully I wasn't too scatterbrained. (laughs) That's great.